My name is Marco, and my job is writing tourist guides. It's a job that I like. I like discovering new places, getting to know their colors, their tastes, the people who live there. I like setting off. And today I'm setting off for the Abruzzi, to the area between the Trigno and Sinello rivers, in the province of Chieti. I have to write a guide to the city of San Salvo. I've never been, which is why I can't wait to get there. And a few kilometers from the coast of the Adriatic, facing the sea near the mouth of the Trigno, here is San Salvo. These fertile lands have attracted man since ancient times, as is demonstrated by the Quadrilateral Archaeological Park in the heart of the historic center of San Salvo in Piazza San Vitale. Davide, a professor and historian, explains to me that the park was born at the end of the 90s to accompany the digs that took place from 1997 to 2006. Tra questi si segnalano il mosaico prolicromo molto bello e, e comunque ci sono diverse testimonianze che sottolineano la, la grandezza e la ricchezza di, di questo sito eh, che poi è stato rioccupato e riutilizzato nel Medioevo da questa abbazia cistercense. Questi monaci cistercensi che riescono a mettere assieme possedimenti che vanno dalla provincia dell'Aquila fin giù al tavoliere di Puglia, quindi la provincia di Foggia and visible traces of this period can be seen in the Church of St. Joseph, then annexed to the monastery whose facade, on the other hand, was rebuilt in the 1960s. And continuing towards the western side of the square, I find the Porta della Terra, the Earth Gate. La Porta della Terra trae il suo nome proprio dal fatto che eh, era la porta rivolta verso la terra, verso le campagne, dove le persone, eh, i contadini che la mattina uscivano da, da San Salvo, vi si recavano per lavorare. And it was during rebuilding work on the gate that the first Roman remains were found, that can still be seen, along with other finds, in the Porta della Terra Civic Museum. It is here that I meet Katia, the museum guide. Il Museo di San Salvo non è semplicemente un contenitore del materiale, ma nasce come una copertura di strutture che hanno resistito per circa 2000 anni all'insediamento costante nella città e nel centro storico di San Salvo. La scoperta più grande è stata quella di vedere come le mura medievali si posassero in realtà su strutture precedenti di epoca romana. Not far from the Civic Museum, there is another very original museum, the Merry-Go-Round of Memory, run by Angelina. This place I called not at home the Giostra of Memory, for not giving the idea of a museum annoying. Giostra is like the Giostra of children. In any instance, we can, from the object material, return to the imagination, to the beliefs, to the superstitions. Every object can return to some long stories that have protagonists, not only the stars, the malocchi, the saints. In the medicine room, for example, you can learn about the therapeutic uses of rosemary. And that of the trousseau, you can imagine women sewing linen for their daughters. And on what remains of plates and tankards, you can imagine the sights of transhumanists that passed near here along the cattle track that went from the Abruzzi to Puglia. Paeselle de sogni e d'amore, profumate di vino e de grano, ci se sento l'odore de mare, di stupezza d'Abruzzi, Lourdes. O santa salve belle, stengo lontana da te, di notte e giorni piagne, no tempo non basta per me. Se ingranditemi, ne è più molto quelle. No paese a due sonnate, altra gente mo sarei bracciata, ma di stupezza la brutta è sempre lui. But San Salvo is more than just history. Immersed in the green of the communal villa, there are their modern glass fountain, the production of which is one of the healthiest industrial activities in this area. and the kite, a symbolic sculpture of democratic participation in civic life. But as soon as you leave the town, you find yourself in the richest of countryside.
Here they produce an oil that is delicate, green, and almondy. This DOP oil is known as Colina Teatine. And they also produce some excellent wine, Pecorino, a white wine, Cherasuolo or Cherry, a rosé produced from Montepulciano grapes. But no local cantina would lack the symbol of their local wines, Montepulciano d'Abruzzo d'Oc, that, if aged for at least two years, at least nine months of which in wooden casks, can be granted the reserve label. And it is with the aftertaste of red fruits and licorice of the Montepulciano in my mouth, with its hints of licorice and red fruits, that I also taste Ventricina, a salami made with the most noble and lean parts of the pig, minced sweet pepper and wild fennel. But the countryside around San Salvo is famous above all for the production of peaches. And Nicole explains to me that, thanks to the work of the cooperative of which he is the president, they end up on tables all over Europe. La cooperativa è formata da, da mille soci, tutti produttori. Organizziamo il tutto, la lavorazione interna, poi eh, con l'aiuto dei de professionisti, quindi direttori commerciali, portiamo questa nostra produzione nei vari mercati europei. Poi il 50% del nostro prodotto viene consumato qui in Italia, l'altro 50% va in Europa. Eh, tutti i mercati d'elite perché abbiamo una produzione di alta gamma, quindi produciamo essenzialmente pesche precoce, e nettarine precoce. È un prodotto più difficile da coltivare, quindi anche questo ci contraddistingue perché poi la coltivazione del pesca è essenzialmente una coltivazione a livello manuale, dalla potatura al diradamento alla raccolta. These are gestures learned from fathers and grandfathers. It was they in the 50s who realized that this sandy terrain, so close to the river Trino, was perfect for the cultivation of peaches. Thus, as the end consumer, I load up with San Salvo peaches, thank Nicola, and head off again for the last stage of my journey, the sea. Here I meet Stefano, who takes me to visit the Mediterranean Botanical Gardens. Stefano explains to me that at one time this was a public beach, but today it hosts the first and most extensive botanical gardens in the whole of the Abruzzi. It is a protected dune environment which, over the course of 10 years, has spontaneously recreated a typical coastal vegetation where plants that had almost become extinct on this stretch of coast can find refuge along with migratory birds, birds of prey and waders, and in the ponds behind it, frogs, toads and pond terrapins. Per quanto riguarda la flora c'è soprattutto un ambiente dunale eh, integro, in notevole accrescimento con tutta la varia successione vegetazionale eh, tipica di una spiaggia dunale ancora integra. Stefano then explains to me that the Kentish plover nests here. Il fratino è un uccello strettamente legato all'ambiente dunale e quindi è anche un preziosissimo indicatore biologico dello stato di salute dell'ambiente dunale. Dove il fratino nidifica vuol dire che le dune ci sono ancora, vuol dire che il mare non mangia la costa, vuol dire in definitiva che si possono ancora fare degli ottimi bagni. And why the dunes are so important? Ma le dune sono importanti perché dal punto di vista vegetazionale oh, sono un vero e proprio deserto che vive. Mentre l'albero ha una bellissima presenza statica, le dune devono muoversi in continuazione come degli esseri camminanti e pensanti quasi per poter vincere un ambiente estremamente duro a livello di temperatura, a livello eh, di calpestio delle persone quando questo si verifica. Questo territorio offre delle spiagge attrezzate che sono comunque bellissime. And on the beach at San Salvo Marina, which really does have all you could want, I meet Michael and Serena, a young couple who have the good fortune to live a few feet from this sea. So, work permitting, whenever they can they come here to sunbathe and swim, mixing in with the tourists who come from all over the world, drawn by the perfect welcome, the facilities and the clear waters these beaches have to offer.
there is also fun to be had in the evening in one of the many clubs along the coast where the bathing establishments transform themselves to accommodate the nightlife. And this welcome also means the possibility of making use of the handy tourist port. And dining in excellent restaurants where you can try the traditional dishes of this stretch of coast. Like cavatelli alla pescatrice, a pasta made with water and flour and scooped out by hand and mixed with a sauce whose ingredients are oil, garlic, parsley, tomato, and obviously pescatrice, or anglerfish. And the really famous fish soup, made with at least six or seven different sorts of fish that vary depending on the season, along with shellfish, placed to cook in a sauce made from extra virgin olive oil, garlic, fresh cherry tomatoes, green pepper, and parsley. But here the cuisine is not just the marine tradition because the countryside has its influence too like the balls of cheese and eggs, made with a mixture of sheep and cow's milk cheese, breadcrumbs, egg and parsley. Once they are prepared, they are cooked for five minutes in a sauce made of garlic, celery, tomato, green and red peppers, and then the balls of cheese and eggs are ready. After trying these excellent dishes, I really have to finish up my dinner with some great sweets. And I have to say I'm spoiled for choice between Boccanotti, Caterrette, Cicerchiada, Celi Ripieni, Mostaccioli, Caccionetti with chickpeas, Scripelle, Fiadone di Ricotta, and Sweet Pizza. Unfortunately, I cannot taste them all, but this gives me a reason to return to San Salvo. I tasted wonderful dishes and met people with stories to tell. I found peace for myself in my eyes. I saw beautiful sights and discovered places to have fun or just to simply relax. I will write all this in the guide, but above all, I will write that whoever comes to San Salvo cannot but feel love at first visit.